Man, it's been a long time since I've made a video, hasn't it? <laughs> um, hey guys, it's me, it's Caesar, the Creepy Fox. I'm here with an update video for all of you. Um, I know there's probably quite a bit of you that have been wondering, where have I been? What, what's been going on? Where are the videos? Why have there not been any videos? Uh, if you are those individuals, I will let you know that I have been posting community posts here on YouTube for the past couple of months. I have also been a lot more active on my Instagram at the Creepy Fox Official, where I've also been posting updates and I've actually been able to speak with a lot of you one on one to kind of explain what's been happening. But uh, yeah, on today's episode of uh, the Creepy Fox, I am actually going to go ahead and talk to you guys about what exactly has been happening over the past couple of months, my, I guess you could say, scary story, since uh, uh, for me it was pretty scary. It's been quite a bit of uh, scary times here and there for the past couple of months. Uh, so yeah, we'll be going ahead and talking about that uh, today. So roll the intro. Okay, so if you saw the video uh, last time that I uploaded, which was the sleepover stories, then you might have seen at the end of the video where I kind of explained everything that was happening, uh, just to kind of quickly catch everybody up. Um, I ended up having a giant cell tumor in my left leg and my femur and my knee area. Uh, which at the time was causing quite a bit of excruciating amount of pain. I had no idea what was awaiting me after that video was completed. It was kind of just like a, hey, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated. Uh, I'm going to be getting surgery. I don't know when. Um, and that was kind of my sign off right there. I, I thought I was going to be able to maybe work on a couple more videos, but I had no idea that for the next month and a half, almost two months, I would be in and out of the hospital and in and out of pain. So after that video was completed, uh, about, I wanna say a week later, um, I ended up suffering a fall. Uh, what happened was I was in my bed, you know, I was just watching TV like normal, and I got up because I wanted to go use the restroom. So I had my crutches next to my bed. Um, I ended up grabbing them. I, you know, put them under my, my armpits. And um, I ended up walking into the hallway. Uh, the rooms have carpet. The hallways are wooden floor. So, you know, I'm crutching my way into the hallway. Um, and a few steps in, the right crutch ends up, whoop, slipping out of my grasp. All of a sudden, all the weight goes on my bad leg, the one with the tumor. All of a sudden, I hear a <coughs> sound in my left leg slash femur slash knee. And then I ended up collapsing onto the ground from the pain. Um, I laid there for a good solid minutes, screaming out in pain, crying. Um, I knew at that very moment that something was wrong, that something broke, something snapped. Now, luckily, I wasn't too far away from my phone, although I did have to pretty much crawl my way back to the room in excruciating pain. I had to reach up onto the, uh, the dresser, which, were, which was where my phone was at, to grab the phone, which was charging, to call my mom because my mom was already on the way from work, uh, home from work. And uh, there was no way if I call paramedics for them to get into the house. They'd have to forcefully, uh, you know, break the door down. And, you know, so luckily my mom was already like five minutes away. So I told her like, help, like, you know, I fell down. I uh, ended up, you know, I'm pretty sure I broke something in my leg. Uh, so she came rushing home. As soon as she was home, we called 911. Uh, firefighters came and, you know, I was like, at that point, my mom helped me onto the bed. I was in excruciating pain, like 10 out of 10 pain. And, uh, you know, the firefighters came, but hey, what happened? So I told them, hey, you know, I fell down, this and that. So they're okay, you know, we we're waiting on the paramedics who came about five to 10 minutes later. 
Uh, so getting out of the house was definitely a struggle because again, at that point, I was in so much pain. So what happened was they got me onto a, like an office chair, one of my office chairs I used for recording. They pushed me out into the hallway. They lifted me up into a gurney bed, which was <laughs> really painful because again, I'm in pain. Uh, they have to get me down the steps to my house because there's two steps on the, actually there's two steps in the back and in the front. Uh, so, you know, the bed's moving. It's like, ow, oh, ow, oh, I'm in so much pain. It was, it was crazy. And um, uh, my next door neighbors, um, the wife of the neighbor and the little daughter, you know, they saw me in pain. They're like, what happened to you, Caesar? I'm like, oh, I fell. Like, you know, I was trying my best to hold back the tears because, you know, the little girl and, you know, she doesn't know. And so I told her, I'm going to be okay. Don't worry. I'm going to be fine. And so, you know, we get into the uh, ambulance. Uh, I get drove into my nearest hospital about a 10 minute drive away. That whole time the ambulance is moving back and forth. And I'm like, I'm like, make it go faster so we can get there sooner. But at the same time, I'm like, slow down. The ambulance is moving so much. I'm in so much pain. Uh, they had like an ice pack on me. So eventually we get into the emergency room. Uh, I'm there laying for about 20 to 30 minutes. Bear in mind, the emergency room was packed, filmed. Luckily, you know, at the time, this was April 14th. By that point, you know, uh, things were a little bit more settled with, you know, with everything that's been happening. Uh, so luckily, you know, it wasn't too bad. But again, I was there for 20, 30 minutes laying in that gurney bed with an ice pack, no painkillers at all, broken bones waiting for a room because you know it was very busy i had to restart the recording because the mail came so anyways i was there in the gurney bed eventually a room was finally opened up uh, i went i got taken to the room i was there from about 4 p.m until about 10 p.m and the whole process you know i'm pretty much laying there uh they gave me a shot in the butt they gave me some norco and some other um, painkillers which really didn't do much the whole time my knee is like banded or like up i guess but I, I can't it's it's up you know like they wanted me to have it flattened out because they wanted to put a brace on um but i couldn't do it uh, so you know slowly they had to kind of like bend it even though you know everything was broken uh so that whole time you know i ended up getting an x-ray i ended up getting a ct scan uh, by the end of it, 10 o'clock, me expecting like, hey, you know, I'm going to get put into surgery. This tumor that I have in me is going to be removed either tonight or maybe tomorrow. Uh, the bones are going to be realigned and everything is going to be fine. But what ended up happening was like, no, you're fine. We're just going to go ahead and send you home with a brace. We're going to send you home with painkillers and, uh, you know, follow up with your, your specialist or your doctor. I was angry not only was i in a lot of pain i was angry and so was my mom who was there with me the whole entire time because we could not believe that you know hey i'm in 10 out of 10 pain i can barely move you're telling me you're gonna send me home with these broken bones shattered bones knee is there's a 10 centimeter giant cell tumor size of a grapefruit in my knee and you guys are gonna tell me just to go home at the time, you know, I was pretty mad about it. Now, kind of, you know, a month and a half, two months later, I guess I can understand, you know, there wasn't really much they could do, um, you know, kind of dumb. Uh, so getting from the that room, the emergency room to the car, because bear in mind, I gotta get home. I can't stay in the hospital in the emergency room was one of the most difficult things in my life because I could not move my leg. Any little bit of movement, this little bit in my leg, I was screaming in pain, in agonizing pain. It was the kind of pain where I'm not afraid to tell you guys, I was crying. It was bad. It was the kind of pain where you pass out. So getting from the hospital emergency room to the car was hard um, because bear in mind, I can't really bend my knee at this point because it's straightened out in a brace and i can't really you know i i'm tired at this point i have no energy so having to get into from into the wheelchair out of the wheelchair and then into a small volkswagen golf car uh, where the seats are small and you know i'm a six foot one inch guy uh 200 pound guy that was difficult somehow some way we did it we got home 
I had to get up the two flights of steps. Uh, that was difficult. I had to use crutches. That was about an hour just to do that. Eventually, I got into the house. I lay down on this bed that I'm laying here. And for the following two weeks, I had to wait to see a specialist because as you might have heard in that video I did, uh, the update video at the end of uh, the sleepover stories, the insurance was not exactly being nice. The, the funny part was at the end of it all, they had to help me out uh, because, you know, it was kind of an emergency kind of deal. Uh, so, you know, so yeah, for the next two weeks after that, I was pretty much in this bed in pain, um, you know, on painkillers waiting for the appointment to come. Because what happened was I actually had an appointment with a specialist on April 15th. The day before I fell and I was in the emergency room, but we canceled the appointment because we thought, oh, you know, like they're gonna do something here at the emergency room and then the hospital, like there's there's no point in having this appointment. But then when we found out there was nothing we could do, we called the doctor. I say we because my mom did because, you know, here I am in excruciating pain, I can't really talk. I'm laying in the bed and the, the next appointment was April 28th. So yeah, for two weeks I was in this bed um, in excruciating pain. The only reason I would get out of bed was to use a what's called a bedside commode, which is a, a bedside toilet. You know, it's got like a little bucket. It's got the the, the garbage bag in there. You do your your do your business. You get up. Uh, that was really difficult to do. So you know, eventually the two weeks come and go. Uh, we end up going to the other hospital. This is a different hospital. And, uh, you know, I saw the specialist and he took off the, the really terrible brace that they gave me. At that point, you know, it was not tightened enough. Here I am, you know, not familiar with braces and how they work and the fact that you could actually, you know, make them tighter and more supportive. He took one look at me and he said, yeah, we're not going to make you wait anymore. You are in excruciating amount of pain. He ended up admitting me into the emergency room, their emergency right there. And oh my god, they did so much in comparison to what was done in the other emergency room. These guys really, really did, you know, like a lot to control the pain. Uh, I was put into a brand new brace, which ended up covering my whole leg, as opposed to just a small part of my leg. The other one ended up just covering uh, just a little bit below the knee to just about a little bit above the femur bone. Um, at the time when I was, I forgot to mention this, but when I was in the emergency room in the first hospital, uh, they said that I had a broken tibia and a broken fibia. I hope I pronounced those correctly. Uh, but what ended up happening was when I went to this other hospital, they found that I also had a broken femur. And now these are what are called pathological breaks, pathological fractures, meaning that they weren't caused by anything normal. Uh, that fall that I suffered in the hallway shouldn't have broken my bones. But what happened was since that giant cell tumor I had in my leg had been growing for who knows how long, which by the way, if you're someone that has a giant cell tumor, uh, there's, there's nothing you can do to prevent it. Giant cell tumors kind of just grow out of nowhere. You can be the healthiest person in the world who, you know, exercises every day, has a great diet, who eats healthy, gets plenty of sleep, has no stress. It doesn't matter. You can get a giant cell tumor just out of nowhere. So if you're someone that suffers, you know, pains in your joints, because, you know, there's things like arthritis, but, you know, if you're a young person between 20 and 40 years old and you're suffering pains in joints, definitely check with your doctor uh, because, you know, you, you never know. Yes, it can maybe be, you know, you just sprained your knee. We're using the knee as an example. You know, maybe you sprained your knee or whatever, but it's better to be safer than sorry because you don't want it to get to as big as mine got. So anyways, back to me being in the emergency room at the uh, next hospital, you know, I was put into another bed. They gave me, uh, they put an IV into me. Thankfully, the other hospital didn't do that. So they were able to inject me with a uh, painkiller uh, similar to morphine. However, the, I forget the name of it. It starts with a D. Um, maybe somebody down in the description who's more dis uh, more knowledgeable with uh, medicine can tell me, but it starts with a D. It's more stronger than morphine, and uh, it's just like a super small dosage. 
um, very small dosage and that automatically you know killed the pain uh, so that allowed me to be able to you know be moved around a little bit so they can get you know their CT scans their x-rays all that um, so you know I ended up getting admitted that night into the hospital later that night I had an MRI done and you know they had the same results as the other hospital uh, but included you know they saw that I had the fracture in the femur uh, so next step was getting a biopsy on the tumor because bear in mind this whole time I had no idea if that tumor I had in me was cancerous and that was probably the scariest thing on top of all the pain I was in I had no idea if what I had was cancerous so a couple of days later I'm put under you know anesthesia and uh, you know I'm asleep uh, the only thing I remember was being in the emergency room I see the doctor I'm like hey what's up what's up what's going on uh, shout out to my uh, doctor by the way he is a cool dude uh, you know it's really cool because you know I'm 29 years old he's a young doctor he's 36 years old so when I'm speaking to him it feels like I'm talking to a close friend so uh, shout out to my doctor you know who you are if for whatever reason you are watching this video thank you for everything you did for me so yeah you know the biopsy is done I end up waking up and uh, the waking up part was very, very scary. And the reason I say very scary is because, you know, I'm kind of still out of it. But what ended up happening, and this ended up leading to a series of complications, was I couldn't breathe. You know, I had a uh, the little, like, um, you know, like the, not a breathe, I did have a breathing tube down in my, you know, my mouth, my throat while the surgery was being done. But I also had like, you know, that little plastic thing and it's like the little things here that provides you oxygen uh, but regardless I was like <sighs> I couldn't breathe it was it was just really scary and what happened was the anesthesia uh, what it does is it makes your lungs lazy that's the best way they described it to me and so you know my lungs couldn't really you know get air uh, so I'm you know I'm gasping for air for like the next 10 to 15 minutes and you know the nurse was like no you're fine you know uh, you know your heart rate's fine your blood pressure is fine um everything's fine it's just the anesthesia so eventually i recovered from that i get sent up to the uh, regular room and i'm there for about uh three or four days because the uh, main operation which was the uh, total knee replacement and partial femur replacement because the giant cell tumor essentially consumed it all was the following week. So I was there for about three or four days. They ended up sending me home for another three days. Luckily by that point, you know, the pain was, it was still there, but it was controllable. So getting back into the house was, you know, not too bad. And, you know, I laid again in this bed for the next three or four days. Um, you know, still some pain, but again, not too bad. I ended up going back again that next Friday. Uh, I ended up going there early. Uh, my The surgery was scheduled for noon. Uh, I got there at 7.30, but what ended up happening was there was a delay because there was a complication with the surgery that the doctors were doing on the previous patient. I don't know what kind of surgery it was. I think it was an orthopedic surgery, just like mine. Uh, there was a delay, so I didn't get into the emergency room. I'm sorry, not the emergency room. The operation room until 5 p.m. So I'm in pre-op from about uh, 10.30, 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. I was uh, pretty bored. Uh, what ended up happening was in the pre-op room, they ended up putting two uh, nerve catheters into my left leg, one on the top, one on the bottom of my butt. Uh, I forget the names of the nerves, but what it is is, yeah, it's a, a nerve catheter needle that goes all the way in. It was, uh, getting that in there into the, the muscle in the leg was kind of painful. Uh, you know, they, and they have an ultrasound machine. They're kind of looking at it. I have to lift my leg because it gets painful when I have it a certain way for too long. So that's why I did that. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, they put it into the muscle. Uh, it was painful. But what happens is at that point, once it's in, they start injecting me with a nerve agent. And that nerve agent completely numbs the entire leg so that you don't feel anything. So you know how I was in pain when they were moving the leg? Well, they could move it, bend it, whatever. I had no pain whatsoever because the nerve catheters pretty much numbed everything. So the top one numbed the top half of my leg and then the other one on my bottom of my butt ended up, uh, you know, good, getting the rest of it, which was the bottom of the leg. So again, it's like I had no leg. It was, the feeling was like I had no leg. It was a really weird and strange feeling. 
But yes, anyways, you know, I'm in the operating room. The operation was about four and a half to five hours because, you know, they had to get in there. They had to cut. The cut was, it's pretty big. It's from, I'm looking at it right now. I'm taking off my brace. It's from the bottom of their knee all the way up until about uh, half, halfway the femur. Uh, I don't know if I can show a picture because, you know, YouTube and their their guidelines about like, oh, you know, you can't show things that are too graphic, whatever. Um, if I can, I'll try. If not, message me on Instagram. If you're so, you know, if you want to go ahead and check it out, I can kind of show you there. Because uh, I know I've had some people be like, hey, like, um, would it be cool if you showed me how it looked just out of curiosity? I'm like, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, you know, the surgery is done. I ended up waking up again. Again, I ended up having that same issue where I couldn't breathe. My lungs were kind of lazy again. Uh, so that was another scary experience there that uh, I get put back up into the, uh, you know, the hospital room that I was in. And for the next two and a half weeks, I am pretty much hospital bound. I was supposed to, you know, normally with something like this, I should have been home within three to four days, but there were a lot of complications. Now, remember how I said before, I was in this bed for about two weeks after the first time I went to the other emergency room? Well, it turns out that since I wasn't moving at all, barely just to get up to use the restroom, I ended up developing blood clots. Yes, what happens is if you don't move, your blood starts to clot. And what happened was I got a blood clot in one of the, um, again, I'm not a, uh, medicine expert, but one of the veins that goes into the lungs where it has the uh, CO2, that carries the CO2 into the lung, and then on the other side is where the oxygen comes out. So on the CO2 side, uh, there is a blood clot, which was what was causing, on top of the anesthesia, the inability to really breathe properly. So that's why, um, on top of that, my heart rate was really high. Normally, a normal heart rate is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Resting on this on, a, on the hospital bed, I was about 120 to 125. Sitting up, just sitting on the bed, about 130 to 140. Standing up, 150 to 160. And at that point, I was out of breath. I was feeling nauseous. My vision was going in and out. I felt like I was gonna pass out. I felt the chills. Uh, it was it was scary. It was really scary because every time I'd have to get up to use the restroom I felt I was going to pass out. So for the first week or so I had to use that bedside commode I talked about next to the hospital bed just to be able to use the restroom and well to go number one I had to use one of these things right here um, you know you do your business in there uh, eh, they're not exactly uh, fun to use but you know you got to do what you got to do uh, so yeah, you know, I was uh, on blood thinners. Uh, it's called Lovenox. It's an injection that either can go into your arm or into your stomach. Uh, I have it done in the stomach. I say have because I still have to get them done today. My mom helps me with them. Uh, it's a Lovenox. It's a blood thinner. It goes into your stomach. Boop. Injection. You know, the blood thinner medication. Uh, and that kind of helps thin out the blood. So for the first week or so, I'm or no, I should say the first, yeah, the first week or so, you know, I'm getting those blood thinners. I still had them, you know, after that. Oh, what ended up happening is we switched to what's called Eliquis, which is a pill form of the Lovenox shot. So I'm like, yeah, I don't have to get shots anymore. But that Eliquis uh, pill, the, um, that uh, blood thinner, um, well, let's just say at first it was nice to get no more shots in the stomach, but there were more complications. Uh, so yeah, you know, while I was in those two weeks, they ended up having to, luckily you can't see any uh, damage anymore. I say damage, but like bruising, but every morning at 5 a.m. while I was in the hospital, knock, knock, knock. Hey there, Caesar, we're here to draw blood. Oh, you know what? Why not? Uh, it was not fun. Uh, I either had to get them here, 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 on the hands. It was to the point where I was filled with like just a bunch of little spots. You can't really see them too much. I also had the IVs. I had one here, one here, and then one here. I had three of them and they were constantly injecting me with the IV fluids, uh, you know, sugar, salts, antibiotics, because uh, uh, when they did some blood results, some blood tests, uh, they found that there was uh, 
you know, an infection in my blood, which I ended up getting fever. So that was another thing that happened. I'm lifting up my leg again. Um, there was uh, complications and I ended up getting feverish. I ended up getting, um, thankfully didn't get up to, I think the really dangerous is 105, but I got up to like 102, 103. Um, so I ended up getting an infection. Luckily that was controlled with the antibiotics. So yeah, we should have been, you know, recovery from the knee. It was just a bunch of other complications, the infection, the having to get the blood thinners because of the blood clot in my lungs, which that other hospital never warned me of. And you know, I didn't know anything about blood clots and laying down. So, you know, on those people, you guys should have said something, but they never did. Uh, so, you know, there was all those complications. Finally, after two and a half weeks, I get dispatched home. By this point, you know, I had some physical therapy done. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was painful, but you know, I was at least able to go home. I went home for about, ooh, I want to say it was a week, a week and a half. And then more complications. Remember that Eloquis pill I told you guys about, the blood thinner? Well, it turns out that it didn't exactly have the best reaction with my body because what ended up happening was the morning of, this is a week after I was dispatched, or dispatched, I'm not a firefighter, a police officer, discharged, so that's the word I'm looking for. Um, I ended up getting excruciating pain in my knee again. And this is the same day I had a follow up with the doctor. I was in excruciating amount of pain again. We drive to the doctor, my mom and dad take me, uh, the doctor sees me, he sees I'm in pain again. He's like, all right, we're gonna get you into the emergency room. So, uh, you know, in the emergency room, the doctor comes, he gets a uh, needle, he puts it into my knee. Oh, that kind of hurt. I, that wasn't my bad leg, trust me, it was my right one. Um, he, you know, squeezes out, I mean, it's not he, uh, she, uh, two doctors. Um, uh, she ended up, you know, taking out like some blood from the knee and that was tested and it turned out I had a large hematoma in my knee. A hematoma is a blood clot. Uh, so great, so the uh, Eliquis pill ended up causing a blood clot in my knee. So I get admitted into the hospital and again, next day I get surgery again, uh, this time to get rid of the uh, blood clot. Luckily this time around when I woke up from the anesthesia, it wasn't really such a big issue. Um, cause I told them about like, Hey, I was having these problems. Uh, they ended up giving me a medication before they woke me up that kind of calmed down my, you know, my, my heart, my lungs, I forgot how they described it, but I pretty much woke up without any problems. I go up to the, the hospital room again. I'm there for a week and, uh, I recovered, I got sent home. And so I've been here now at home for two weeks, which is why I'm making this video. Uh, you know, I could have made it a little bit sooner, but uh, again, I've been in the hospital for over a month. You know, I was kind of dispatched, again, discharged, you know, a couple days here and there, but for the most part, the month of May, I was in the hospital. And uh, so, yeah, that's why I haven't really had a chance to really make any content, uh, you know, as opposed to this video that I'm kind of making right now, which I wanted to make because I felt that, you know what, um, I felt I needed to be, you know, open with every single one of you just to tell you guys about, hey, this is what's been going on. This is where I've been. Again, if you've been following me on my Instagram, then, you know, you've already known about everything that's been happening because I've been posting updates uh, this entire time since I'm more active there in my stories, you know, every single day posting updates about like, hey, you know, here's what's going on. This is what's happening. It's just on YouTube. I don't really get the chance to, you know, upload because I got to edit stuff and put it all together. And since I don't have access to the computer, long story short, uh, yeah. So that's why I wanted to make this video to post it on YouTube because I know not everybody follows me on my Instagram and sees my updates. And I get a bunch of comments and messages here on YouTube about like, hey, you know, why haven't you posted any updates? Where have you been? I'm like, I have. It's just that you guys don't you know, follow me there, but it's okay. Uh, so yeah, um, as to uh, what's gonna be going on uh, from this point on, well, I'd like to continue to, you know, do scary stories videos. Uh, yes, it's kind of painful to sit down uh, to record and edit, but you know, kind of fighting through the pain just to be able to sit down and edit. But I wanna do scary stories videos, but I do need you guys, you know, if you have a scary story, uh, please share it with me. 
uh, it'd be great to feature you on a future episode because if not, um, I'll most likely do these sorts of videos, vlog kind of videos where either I update you guys with what's going on, you know, health-wise on my end, uh, maybe, you know, some random videos. I do have an animation video coming out. This is something I've been talking about for quite some time now. It's my first episode of my animated series. Uh, that should be up hopefully by the end of the month, if not, you know, beginning of July, mid-July. I'll make sure to update you guys on that. If you follow me on my Instagram, you guys get updates on that. Um, yeah, there's that. And then there is the ultimate thing at the end of all of this. And that is my return to Disneyland, uh, my my job. Um, I doctor said it's gonna be about three or four months, give or take, until I can return. And this time around, I'm gonna most likely go full time which means it's gonna be even more difficult to get uh, videos out. But I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my best to, you know, get you guys videos. In the meantime, again, it just depends on if people send stories. If people don't send stories, well, there's not gonna really be any scary stories, but you know, there are story submissions coming in, then you know, you guys can get guaranteed that there will be stories. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Oh, I wanted to show you guys this boot. This boot here was actually something I had to wear for quite a while. Uh, just because, you know, it kind of helps with when I'm laying down because what happened for a while was I had something called uh, foot drop where, you know, I had those nerve catheters in me which eventually got taken out uh, because my leg was so numb, the leg would fall and so I started getting pain in my ankle which was what this uh, boot was for and make sure my leg would stay straight so that it wouldn't fall. Uh, so, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the video. I again wanted to go ahead and just kind of tell you guys about hey, this is where I've been, this is what's been happening. Um, I'm sorry there hasn't really been any content. Again, it's just been because hey, you know, I've been in the hospital for so long, I've been in all this pain. Luckily, you know, I'm going to be starting physical therapy I think next week or the week after that. My doctor ordered it, which is good. Thank you to my doctors. Thank you to my nurses, you know, that ended up helping me and sharing that, you know, I was as comfortable as I could be and being able to help me out and uh, get me to where I am today. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, I will hopefully see you all in a scary stories video uh, if people, uh, you know, are generous enough to share a scary story. If not, I will see you um, in the next video, which could possibly be my animation video, uh, the first episode of my animation video, or maybe another vlog or something. I guess it really depends. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Have yourselves a good day and take care.